right, what's up, everybody? Welcome again to our fifth episode of the SAC Sacramento Acoustic Podcast. Today, I am here with Mr. David Ortiz. How you doing, David? Good, fantastic. Awesome. This is the lead singer of All in a Day from Sacramento, of course. Um, and we're just going to talk about uh, what he's got going on in his life, uh, along with uh, everything that's, uh, that else that comes with it. That's all he got. It's all we can do, right? <laughs> All right. First, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, some of your beginnings. Like, where'd you get your uh, your, your musical influence? What motivated you? Uh, I could pretty much say my brother motivated me to get into music. He was a guitarist and a singer. Um, <clears throat> I picked up drums. I tried harmonica. Tried uh, guitar. Hated it. Uh, and then when I picked up drums, got the drumsticks. Actually, just not even drums, just drumsticks. Mm -hmm. My dad was always like, stop hitting my seat. But uh, I fell in love with just hitting things. <laughs> Not a violent person. But uh, but yeah, I just fell in love with drums. And I played drums for 13 years. I probably started playing guitar about six years ago. But yeah, you know, drums was kind of my initial thing. Nice. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, so like you said, you hated playing guitar. And then ironically, you became the lead guitarist and, you know, of, a, of a band here in Sacramento. It's yeah. really funny. <laughs> it is ironic. It was... Um, it came second nature, um, but I started being able to limit it with drums. You couldn't write a, a full song, so yeah. I picked up guitar, and I was helping my brother write a lot of music, and and uh, not playing guitar, but just on the back scenes, and that's kind of how I learned yeah, help cool. out on writing, and then I kind of just grew on me. I didn't like it at first because it was too too technical, too touchy, too yeah. much knowledge. I'd rather just get to the point. I, yeah, I totally know what you mean. So it's, that's actually how I learned to play guitar, it's just by ear. Like, I'm not going to take a class, I'm not going to waste my time doing, you know, learning all this crap that I don't really care to learn. I'm just going to listen to my favorite songs and pick it up. That's what I did. <laughs> Real musicians do. By ear. Not really. <laughs> but, uh, alright, well, um, you've also been uh, in the music scene uh, for, for quite a long time. We've got a lot of friends who uh, are also in uh, bands uh, very different from your band. Tell us about uh, uh, your beginnings with ATA. ATA. I was playing with my brother originally, and I was at his house, probably just doing some writing, writing some music. And then uh, I heard a band across the street from their apartments, and I was like, hey, "Anytime I hear music, I'm just attracted to it." So I went over there and just hung out, and I was like, "Hey!" And I realized my buddy Marcos from high school was playing the guitar, and I was like, "Hey, what's up, Marcos?" And then uh, their drummer was like hitting stuff and being actually a violent person, <laughs> spitting on their walls, and I was like, pretty disrespectful. <laughs> so then they ended up kicking him out, but I touched up bases with Marcos, and then um, they asked me to play drums, so I started doing it on a side project. So I had two bands going on. I was a drummer of both bands, but, uh, and then really I, I played with ATA, it was mostly just to upscale my skill. I played alternative rock with a band called Lest We Fall, yeah. and then, um, and that was like all my dedication in writing, and then, ATA was just metal. Was and ATA skill. were they known as ATA then too? Yeah, they've always been ATA. Yeah. They really held on to that name. That's 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 rare yeah, for cool. a lot of bands that last for you know so long. They end up, end up changing the name so many times. You know, find out that they have the same name as somebody else. I know my band has done that numerous times. So no, it's, it's really yeah. cool to yeah. To Tyler know. Tyler the singer, I guess I think he came up with it and. He kind of has a spiritual side to him, so that's kind of why I came up with Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. All right. Anything else? Uh, any any other bands that you've been in? I've uh, been in uh, quote unquote. I hate everything for a little <laughs> bit. Um, really, other than that, just jam with a couple of musicians on the side. I mean, I've been in other projects, but nothing like solid. No. Yeah, yeah, nice. nothing too solid. It's been a lot of fun. Um, how, I mean, how many years, excuse me, have you been playing, uh, you've been in the scene? Mm, let's say about 14, 15 years I've been playing in the scene, probably about six, or actually now I'm getting older, probably about seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah. So with All in a Day. Yeah. And all, how long has uh, All in a Day been together? Six years. Nice. So that's kind of my scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other bands kind of broke it before we did anything. I played shows and stuff, but nothing like solid, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you guys have been uh, doing really, really well, uh, playing with a lot of uh, big names and doing a lot of big things. So uh, on that note, we're going to listen to a song that Dave put together for us. 
Yeah, this will be a cover um, from Radiohead, one of my biggest influences. It's called High and Dry. So uh, just kind of bear with me.
Go ahead and give that song uh, credit where it's due. Who does that? Radiohead. Uh, it's called High and Dry. Absolutely. That's yeah. such a good song. Too. Great band. Yeah, they really, really are. Uh, very underrated, too. <laughs> nice. Um, so, um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some things like uh, you brought some merch in, right? Brought some stuff to show people. Yeah. Uh, try to sell some CDs and tickets. Let's, sh let's show that. Can we get some zoom ins, camera guys? All right, which camera? Fancy boys. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first one is, uh, <clears throat> I guess our main thing is our show tomorrow is uh, with Oleander and uh, Johnny Craig and Track Fighter at Cesar Chavez Park. It's their 21st birthday annual show. Not annual, but 21st birthday anniversary show. Um, so they've been having record-breaking numbers, and we're going to have our CD finally after six years out for sale there, um, entitled Something We're Saving. So there it is. And uh, it took us a while to get it, so pick up your copy. It has our five tracks on there. Uh, we recorded down in L.A. Uh, everything's produced. It's very good quality, so if you like our music, if you do, then it's worth it. So seven bucks for a CD tomorrow. Um, that's going to be past tense because this is going to be released later. So. And uh, we also have tickets for sale, which will be in time for My Darkest Days on June 17th. And uh, they're 15 bucks. It helps the band. We're going to have... Um, uh, we'll deliver to you, no surcharges, so you're saving a couple bucks and you're helping out the local scene. So all in a day with My Darkest Days at Ace of Spades, June 17th. Um, and then we have uh, June 27th at the California State Fair. Uh, we'll be playing uh, with the single second before us and Joan Jett is headlining that night at the fair, as far as I know, so it'd be pretty cool. I love rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be a fun show, yeah. <laughs> cool, man. That's really cool. So come on out. Glad to see you guys are doing really, really well right now. Yeah. Man. All in a day. Thank you. All in a day. This podcast will be done all in a day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about some of uh, your favorite local uh, spots, like some of your local venues. What are your favorite places to play here in Sacramento? Favorite places would be, uh, of course, Ace of Spades. Absolutely. You know, with their sound quality and they allow upcoming artists to play with, uh, you know, signed artists. It's a great way for exposure, management, you know, I'll even hit up managers they're playing with and they'll respond, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to get signed, but mm. there's, they're allowing that for bands to come on the up, so that's cool. Um, I know it's a little bar, but I love the Peanuts, <laughs> uh, which is Shakers. Oh, yeah. Off uh, San Juan and Greenback, Jamie's our man. Uh, not the best sound, but one of the best vibes you're going to have. It's, yeah, it is a really fun place to play. There's oh, yeah. great vibes there and cool people. Yeah. Always have a good time. Um, any others, you know, kind of played everything. I would say those are kind of my keys. Sorry for leaving in and out. <laughs> That's just where I kind of like the sound of this. And there's many. Yeah, there's just there's so many Sacramento uh, venues all over the place. Um, a lot of them are really cool. You know, a lot of them are upcoming. So. There's lots going on here in Sacramento. Sacramento's got a bigger music scene than people are aware of. Just check it out. So tell us about the Sacramento Film and Music Festival. Uh, we signed up through Facebook, and they do a listening party of, I'm guessing, at 50 to 100 bands. And uh, so we submitted our music, two tracks. They, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, they could be instrumental, so they might not like your music no matter how good it is, yeah. for what they want to do in their video. Um, but we got chosen, so we're working with Bob Yoshino, and we're going to have that out in August at the Crest Theater, and uh, it's going to premiere our music video for our song, With Fire, it's our last song we recorded down in LA, and uh, it's coming out pretty good so far, um, hopefully you guys will be in some of the shots. Uh, we're going to do some more filming, we've already spent about 20 to 30 hours filming it, it's been fun, it's definitely yeah. different, you know, kind of a confidence booster saying am I doing what's right you know seeing yourself back you know especially I would be interesting on the big screen so yeah yeah absolutely that sounds like a, a, a lot of fun that definitely sounds like something that we should check out yeah as well that'd be really really cool mm -hmm. definitely um so uh, what, what other uh, song that you have prepared for us for tonight I have a song that my girlfriend wants me to play this one's for you Julie <laughs> don't edit that out Kill me. That up, give me uh, that. You will get laid that night. <laughs> yes. It's called uh, Not That Strong. It's actually when I was in Lest We Fall at the tear-off age of it. 
um, my brother kind of brought the song to me and he was yeah. kind of stuck on some parts and I kind of helped him finish it. So it's still not even finished to this day, but it's a good song. It's the first time it's ever going to be played. So it's probably, I might have to do take two, we'll see. All right, all right. It's called Not That Strong, so let's give it a shot. feeling the grooves. <laughs> <laughs> Jump right in. Yeah, that's a really awesome song too. I can't wait till you guys actually play it as a, as a, as a full piece. Well, we'll see. It's a, it's not really an all in a day song, but it might it might be. It's kind of a, it's kind of be dreamy. Whatever you end up doing it. with it, it's going to be amazing. Well, thank way. you. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. I can't wait for that, for sure. Definitely. All right. So let's talk about some of um, your musical influences. Um, obviously, you, your favorite, first song was uh, Radiohead. Um, mm -hmm. That's obviously an influence. What about some of uh, your uh, your older influences? 
Like, because I know, I know you're a very diverse musician. You don't listen to just one style of music. You like a lot of different things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, li I like everything. Um, I like a little bit of country. Same here. Um, I like uh, some of my biggest influences actually metal bands, Pantera, Slipknot. Uh, it's, what's my influence sometimes might not be what I want to play. Yeah. When I was a drummer, I'd play metal. That's why I was in ATA. When I'm a guitarist and a vocalist, I don't want to play metal. I yeah. want to play alternative. So, you know, that's where the Radiohead comes out. So, but I can collaborate both together, you know, being front man of this new project. Yeah. And, uh, or not new, but existing project all in a day. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, so um, that was it. I mean, anything from, you know, I listen to a lot of rap still. It's a lot of Eminem when I was growing up, I mean, high school, so. We kind of all did. We went yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah, and I still listen to it. It's, it's all good music, so anything that's uplifting and positive or, you know, fits the desire that you're feeling. Absolutely. Who were some of uh, your favorite local bands right now? Um, I remember we used to go watch Hella all the time back in the day. Hella. Hella. <laughs> they were really cool. Very talented. <laughs> and uh, I played drums for a long time, and that drummer was, I couldn't even figure out what he was doing. He yeah. was good. Uh, of course, you know, the, the bigger bands, you know, like Deftones and Oleander, those kind of bands. Um, let's see, I like The Walking Dead a lot, I like, uh, for punk rock, I got into them a little late, I'm not a big punk rock fan, but, so if I like you, you're good. They're a very My different opinion. style of punk rock. Yeah, <laughs> they're kind of like, it's, it's good, it's like Southern Cal to me, punk rock, it's real yeah. free. Um, local artists, uh, really like Not Your Style, and they, they, uh, took a dive, unfortunately, but they're, but Leith is still going, he's a good guy. Yeah. But uh, that's some of the local ones. Yeah, of course, ATA. You know, it's fun music. <laughs> They're so good, man. They, uh, they have a side project as well with uh, Marcos, who's the guitarist of ATA, is drumming for uh, Madison Avenue. Oh, okay. And uh, it's a very, very different project that they're doing. It's uh, very much like, um, uh, I'd say softer, like minimal screaming, a lot of singing. Um, I forget, somebody compared it to somebody else, but I can't think of who it was. But uh, that's, that's really, uh, really cool. Another band that I like a lot, I can't remember their name, but the singer's name is, uh, I want to say it's, I want to say it's actually, it's Cliff. And you guys have played with them. Keeping Score. Keeping Score, yeah. They're very underrated. They're an awesome band. They right? are really good, yes. They're really cool, <laughs> yeah. Definitely got a lot of energy to them, a lot of uh, uh, chaos in its own way. It's like chaotic blues is what I, is what I, uh, I hear when I listen to uh, Keeping Score. Yeah, yeah they're good stage performance. Really good to me, I think. Definitely. Um, so let's talk about, you guys uh, are rooming, you guys have a rehearsal studio with Sacramento's Oleander. Mm -hmm. let's, talk about, let's talk about that, how cool is that, you know? It's very cool. A band that we all grew up listening to in high school, and you guys are now like with them in the same room, yeah, sharing cool. equipment and such. <laughs> we'll be playing with them tomorrow. Um, it was cool, I mean, it kind of just, they worked with a couple artists from Sacramento. Uh, we were at the House of Hits off Marconi, and they kind of... Um, kind of took to us a little bit, I guess you could say, and invited us to share the band room when another band was kind of moving out, and they picked us, so we said, sure, why not, kind of came friends at that point, and we still work with their producer, that's, you know, Rich Mauser, he's done Bad Religion, Weezer, yeah. Chris Cornell, he's done a lot of big people, um, hooked us up with Cap Capital Mastering, which is awesome, you know, to, to have your music mastered by someone who did no doubt. Tragic Kingdom is pretty badass. That's fucking awesome. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of good connections from those guys, and uh, you know, they help us out. And just being in that room is just positive energy. They're there practicing tonight. Yeah. So, but I'm here with you guys. Right. We're doing it. It's all local music. So uh, since you got them, uh, since you got them all busted out, go ahead. And let's talk about these tattoos you got going on. Where? Uh, what's? What, tell us about this one over here. I know it's kind of old, obviously. Uh, it's a couple of years old. I got this one. Uh, it's actually uh, I shouldn't say it. I'm not gonna say who, but it's uh, it's it's kind of mimicked off another artist that I like. Um, yeah. It reminds me of kind of tribal waves, ocean. I want to move out of the ocean. Sacramento's great, but I want to move out of the ocean. Um, so I played actually a, an opening, grand opening show for uh, Archangel and uh, off Greenback and his. Uh, he was willing to give me a whole sleeve, but I didn't know what I wanted at that time, so he gave me this free. And this one, I just, uh, he did the rose from Archangel, but uh, just got these other two roses added, added on. So uh, that's why I'm in sleeveless, because uh, it kind of burns. It kind of burns. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not trying to touch him again. It's just, just got like, a tattoo. Ah, <laughs> yeah. ah. 
Awesome. Yeah, those are really cool tattoos, actually. I, I really dig the, uh, the tribal looking one because yeah. the way you explained it, very, very wave like. And it's, yeah, and, and it was all blessed for music, so. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to jump into our next song for the night. Uh, and this one is an untitled track by David Ortiz. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> We're sweaty in here, not because we're making love or anything, but because it's hot. <laughs> it's very hot. And Jason's so hot, I'm sweating. I am so hot, my... Alright, I'm not even going to say that. But yeah, it's, it's ridiculously hot in here. 
And uh, it looks like we have been making love. You should see Brett's hair behind me. <laughs> it's awkward. Not gonna lie. So, uh, I'm gonna ask you a couple more questions. Um, sure. You guys just did an interview for V103 Rock uh, Internet Radio Station, correct? Yeah. Yeah, they're a good station coming up in the internet. Um, I guess you would call it a podcast. Yeah. I'm not really sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, V103.net. Um, they're good. Tune in. I believe it's on Tuesday, Thursday mornings. They have the Morning Dump Show and uh, with Mark Gilmore from, uh, used to be with 98 Rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, But, yeah, make sure you visit our page. You can get the links there. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash all in a day, nine one six. Can you see the? Uh, can you listen to the uh, the podcast? Yeah, we have a couple of live performances on there, um, and uh, we're trying to upload our last interview. We'll see. How, I don't know if we got the actual footage for it yet, but yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, and that's our latest shows. How did the interview go? How was it? It went very good. Uh, I talk a lot about politics, which I don't know a whole lot about, but I know a lot about life, and I don't really like getting involved. So, but other than that, um, did you guys have to go into uh, a studio, or how did that work? Like yeah, interview. yeah, it's up in um, Alberta. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. In 99. So, uh, yeah, it's a cool little location. They got one up Galt. Um, kind of like two places. I actually think they go out of Reno and Oregon. Yeah. Too, and they all like on the same, you know, it's the beauty about internet. You know, you can... It's everywhere. Yeah. It's like herpes. <laughs> it's everywhere. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. B103.net. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Nice, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun, and uh, just recently, I had just recently discovered V103.net, uh, and uh, I got, we got our band on their request page, so um, if you guys ever get a chance, check out V103 Rock, check out All in a Day, uh, as well as Some Seek Forgiveness, which is my band, and um, any other local bands that you may find on there are probably there. It's really cool, so. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, conclude this podcast. Uh, We've uh, we've had Dave Ortiz from All in a Day. He's been badass. He's a really great musician. I hope you guys get a chance to check him out. Check out, uh, check out his band All in a Day, um, and uh, and check out local Sacramento music in general. So, you guys all have a good night and thank you. This podcast is brought to you by Sucker Punch Productions. It's punk. Ow, bitch. <laughs>